It's the most wonderful time of the year. Welcome back to the Green Means Go channel. It's your host, me, and I'm truly excited for yet another year of March Madness. I can't tell you how much of a gut punch it was four years ago when we didn't get the tournament at all. This is my favorite sporting event of all time. We're going to look at 11 facts that will help you navigate this 68 and soon to be 64 team field so that you can have a leg up on your bracket pool. Let's be honest, by the second day, your bracket's going to be busted and you're just going to be rooting for upsets anyway. Before we get started, I want to let you know I am running a free bracket contest over on ESPN. Anyone can join that, and I'm actually giving away the ad revenue of this video to the winner of that group. So if you want more details about how to join that, check out this video. I'll make sure to link it at the end. Let's get into the facts, starting with the first round. At least one top four seed has lost in the first round in 14 of the past 15 tournaments and 32 of 37 overall. Now, of course, when I look at the bracket that was just released, I love all the one, twos, threes, and fours, so it's hard for me to pick an upset, but I'm going to do it anyway. Here's who I like to go down early. I've not been super sold on Baylor this year, and I know Colgate has tournament experience as of late, so why not get a 14 over a 3 early? I've also heard a lot of analysts be pretty high on Samford, and with Kansas injuries, I think this is a prime spot for an upset. So if you think this trend comes true again, I would look at maybe getting rid of Baylor or Kansas in the first round. Fact number two, in 11 of the 12 tournaments that the first four has existed, at least one of its at-large participants has advanced to the second round. They are called the first four games, but I like to call them the Tuesday-Wednesday play-in games. Here's what we have this year. Virginia will play Colorado State, and Boise State will play Colorado. And of these four teams, I really think Colorado State not only has a chance to beat Virginia, but also turn around and beat Texas. Fact number three. In the past five tourneys, 14 of the 20 matchups between number four and number 13 seeds were decided by single digits, the most of any first round seed pairing. In other words, if you have dinner plans when a 13 plays a four, you may want to cancel those for Thursday and a Friday, tune in, they're likely going to be good games. Fact number four and the last of the first round facts. At least one number 12 seed has defeated a number 5 seed in 32 of 38 tournaments. However, last year, all five seeds swept. Everybody loves a 12 over 5 matchup, and last year it burnt everybody as the fives not only won their first game, but we had Miami and San Diego State who made it deep into the tournament, like Final Four deep. San Diego State is a five seed yet again, and they play UAB, who just won their conference tournament. Wisconsin plays James Madison, St. Mary's plays Grand Canyon, and Gonzaga gets McNeese State. And here's the thing. I quite like a lot of these 12 seeds. I think UAB and McNeese State have the best chance to upset their five matchups. I really liked how Wisconsin played in the Big Ten tourney, so I'm not quite sure James Madison is going to have enough. But again, all the analysts are all over James Madison. I'll probably end up taking St. Mary's, though. Moving on to the Sweet 16 fun facts. Fact number five, in the last 26 tournaments all number two seeds have only made the Sweet 16 twice. In other words, you're probably better off to get rid of a two seed before the Sweet 16. Pick one. Here are your options. You have Iowa State, who just beat the number one team in the country in Houston in the conference tournament, Marquette, Arizona, and Tennessee. If I look at these, I think the weakest ones right now are Tennessee and Arizona, although those were two teams that before conference tournaments were fighting for a number one seed in this tournament. So like all of you, I don't know what's going to happen, but I do like Iowa State to make the Sweet 16, but these other three, kick one of them out. Fact number six, at least one number 11 seed has reached the Sweet 16 in 10 of the last 12 tournaments. Here are the 11 seeds for this year, the New Mexico Lobos, the Duquesne Dukes, the Oregon Ducks, and the NC State Wolfpack, all of whom won their conference tourney this year and looked pretty darn good doing it. So good, in fact, that I do think one of these teams does make the Sweet 16. I'm not going to take a guess who, though. Fact number seven. A double-digit seed has advanced to the Sweet 16 in 15 straight tournaments and 36 of 38 overall. Now, I know we just mentioned the historic strength of the 11 seed, but don't count out the 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, and maybe even 16 seed in this category. In other words, take a risk and put a double-digit seed in your Sweet 16. Moving on to the Elite Eight. 
In seven of the past nine tournaments, at least two teams, seeded six or worse, have reached the Elite Eight. Are you seeing a trend here? Stop picking the one through four seed all the way to the Sweet 16 and beyond. Take some risk. Do a tiny bit of research or just go with the mascot or color scheme you like. Please have some fun and make it interesting because it's probably going to happen. Last year was the first year that no one seeds made the Elite Eight. Every other year, at least one number one seed made it to the Elite Eight. And your fact about the final four? At least one team seeded seven or worse has reached the final four in eight of the last nine tourneys. Now look, your guess is as good as mine at what number seven seed or worse is going to make it to the final four. If you have an idea and if you're still watching, drop which high seeded team you think is going to make a deep run this year. We'll call it a Cinderella. And your final fact to keep in mind when filling out your bracket, Florida is the last school to repeat as a champion in 2007, and since then, no defending champion has advanced past the Sweet 16. Cue the Yukon Huskies, your 2023 March Madness champions, entering this tournament as the number one overall seed, having to battle this statistic. History says they won't even make it past the Sweet 16 this year, and I guarantee they're going to lead brackets across the nation for winning it yet again. Use these trends or don't when filling out your bracket, but I beg of you, please don't just pick chalk. I'd rather you pick the colors of the team you like than just pick the number that's the lowest. And again, guys, if you want to make some potential free money, go check out that video. I explain how you get into my free March Madness pool for a chance to win. And if I get 10,000 followers over on TikTok, which I will also link in the description, I will throw in an extra $500. Thanks for coming by. We'll see you next time.